from the University of British Columbia and Martin Ordóñez, and this is Power Electronics. Today, we're going to talk about power losses and we have an invited speaker who's going to explain how to calculate them. Hello everyone, my name is Eric Glitz and I'm a researcher at UBC. My research consists on detailed characterization and analysis of MOSFET power losses, but today we will be looking at a much more simplified model. As most of you already know, MOSFETs are devices which act as switches, allowing current to flow when closed and blocking voltages and not allowing the flow of current when open. A MOSFET has three terminals, gate, drain, and source. Whenever a voltage VGS greater than the threshold voltage is applied between gate and source, the MOSFET turns on and current flows from drain to source. When this voltage is removed, the MOSFET turns off, blocking the voltage applied between drain and source and not allowing current to flow. Every time a MOSFET is turned on, some energy is dissipated in the process. The same occurs when the device is turned off. These are called switching losses. Whenever the MOSFET is on and conducting current, there are losses called conduction losses. Today, we will look at the behavior of both these losses and see how to determine the total power losses in a MOSFET. Let us start with conduction losses. Whenever the MOSFET is on, the path between drain and source is actually a resistance called RDS on. Therefore, conduction losses can be determined in the same way as power dissipation in any resistor. That is, power is equal to the RMS current squared times the resistance. In the case of the MOSFET that gives conduction losses are equal to ID RMS squared times RDS on. But because ID RMS is actually ID on times the square root of the duty cycle D, where ID on is the current flowing through the device when it is on, conduction losses can be determined by ID on squared times RDS on times the duty cycle D. Now let's move on to switching losses. When the MOSFET is off, that is, VGS is zero, the voltage VDS between drain and source is the voltage being blocked by the device, VDD, and no current is flowing through the drain, so ID is zero. In this case, the energy dissipated by the MOSFET is zero. When the MOSFET is turned on, the current ID starts to rise, but the voltage VDS does not start to fall until the current has reached its final value. Then, VDS starts to fall until it reaches its final value, which is close to zero. With this, the MOSFET is completely on, and conduction losses start to take place. If we consider the instantaneous power during this transition, we see a triangular spike. The area beneath the spike represents the energy being dissipated during turn on. This energy can be calculated as ID on times VDD times the total time of the transition divided by 2. The total time is the time it takes for the current to rise plus the time it takes for the voltage to fall. From the turn on energy, it is possible to determine power losses by multiplying the energy by the switching frequency, as this determines how many times per second there will be turn on energy dissipation. Turn off losses are similar to turn on losses. When the MOSFET is on, VDS is very small, close to zero, and there is current flowing through the drain of the MOSFET. When the device is turned off, the voltage VDS starts to rise, but the current ID is still flowing through the device. When the voltage between drain and source reaches its final value, VDD, the current starts to drop until it reaches zero. The area beneath the power curve represents the energy being dissipated during turnoff and can be determined as ID on times VDD times the total time of the transition divided by 2. Again, the total time is the time it takes for the voltage to rise plus the time it takes for the current to fall. Turnoff losses can then be determined by multiplying this energy 
by the switching frequency. This way, it is possible to determine power losses in the MOSFETs of any topology. We will now use a numeric example. Consider the test setup shown. When the MOSFET is on, the current I from the current source flows through the device, and the diode blocks the voltage V in applied by the voltage source. When the MOSFET is off, the current I from the current source flows through the diode, and the MOSFET blocks the voltage V in applied by the voltage source. Suppose that the duty cycle D of the MOSFET is 0.6, the switching frequency is 100 kHz, Vn is 200 volts, and I is 10 amps. Therefore, VDD, which is the voltage being blocked by the device when it is off, is equal to Vn, which is 200 volts, and ID on is equal to I, so 10 amps. Consider RDS on to be 50 milliohms. The rise time for both current and voltage to be 10 nanoseconds, and the fall time to be 8 nanoseconds, again for both current and voltage. Conduction losses can be determined as ID on squared times RDS on times the duty cycle, as seen before. So we have 10 m squared times 50 milliohms times 0 0.6, which gives 3 watts of conduction losses. For turn-on losses, we first need to find the total turn-on time, that is, the current rise time plus the voltage fall time. So we have 10 nanoseconds plus 8 nanoseconds for a total transition time of 18 nanoseconds. We can then find the turn-on energy, which is determined by ID on times VDD times the total transition time divided by 2. So we have 10 amps times 200 volts times 18 nanoseconds divided by 2 to give a turn-on energy of 18 microjoules. Finally, we find the turn-on power losses by multiplying the turn-on energy by the switching frequency. That is, turn-on losses are equal to 18 microjoules times 100 kilohertz, which gives 1.8 watts of turn-on losses. Turn-off losses can be determined in the same way. The transition time will be 10 nanoseconds plus 8 nanoseconds for a total of 18 nanoseconds. Then, the energy will be 10 amps times 200 volts times 18 nanoseconds divided by 2 to get 18 microjoules of energy dissipated each time the switch is turned off. Finally, turn-off power losses can be calculated by multiplying the turn-off energy by 100 kilohertz, which gives us 1.8 watts of turn-off losses. Therefore, the total power being dissipated by this MOSFET operating under these conditions is 3 watts from conduction plus 1.8 from turn on plus 1.8 from turn off, which results in 6.6 .6 watts of losses. Today, we talked about power losses and how to calculate them. Those included conduction and switching losses. If you want to learn more about this topic, please stay tuned.